You're listening to the Gate of Trust podcast. Join hosts Matt Trash and Felix Friedberg's heart-to-heart conversations with artists, entrepreneurs, scholars, and laymen who, by strengthening their trust in God despite all odds, experience outright miracles. Trusting in God can literally save lives. And now, Gate of Trust podcast hosts Matt and Felix. Hi, I'm Matt. And I'm Felix. And this is the Gate of Gate Trust, of Trust podcast. podcast. Hey, Matt, I've got a really good joke for you this week. It's a really good one. Three Yiddish mamas are sitting on a bench, and they're arguing over which one's son loves them the most. And the first one says, you know, my son sends me flowers every single Shabbos. The second one says, you call that love? My son calls me every single day. And that's nothing, says the third one. My son attends therapy five days a week. And you know who he's talking about? Me. That is true love. Felix, let's share the love. (laughs) On today's podcast, Yael and I speak with Roberto and Margie Scherer, who are friends, subscribers, and supporters of Hyenu. Roberto, Rabbi Papi, is a successful businessman with his hands in various industries. Margie is teaching the world to live a little higher, broadcasting daily classes 24-6. Roberto and Margie call Bitachon, Trust, the crown jewel that can literally save lives. Or it can at least keep people out of therapy. Here they are, the amazing and inspiring Roberto and Margie Scherer. Rabbi Roberto and Margie Sher, welcome to the Gate of Trust podcast. I'm very excited to have my wife Yael. join me. I will introduce them both, not just Rabbi Roberto Sher as a seasoned entrepreneur, but the amount of support that he has given Margie in this beautiful initiative, Live a Little Higher platform, which is a Jewish educational platform like I've never seen. The amount of beautiful content that is there for people is unbelievable. And I know you're both big supporters of Jewish education. One of the causes among the many that you support is Hayeno. In addition to giving us incredible Torah learning every single day to Jews all over the world, has published this beautiful Felic edition of the Gate of Trust with Hasidic commentary, which is literally changing lives. So we're very, very excited to have you join us in this conversation about such an important topic, trust. So Roberto, I'll start with you. I know that you two have such a unique story. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about how did you get involved with the Gate of Trust and all the amazing things that you're doing. Oh, that's that's an interesting question. I've been going to the synagogue since I was 12 years old. I was preparing for Bar Mitzvah and the rabbi had something interesting that he invited the kids that were going to do Bar Mitzvah to come Friday nights and uh, do Kiddush in the synagogue or do the Shema or have a part in the prayers so that the parents would come to the synagogue and get them involved. And it worked. This is a, a few years ago, 48 years ago. And uh, I liked it and kept on going. And uh, a few years later of going to the synagogue, I saw that there were other treasures in the synagogue other than going to Daven to Hashem. You just have to look up and your prayers are answered because in the second floor, they had the women's section and uh, Margie was there. And uh, so I found my, my soulmate in the synagogue. At 12 years old? Well, I don't know if I can say this in the United States, but I found her at 13 years, when she was 13 <laughs> years old. I had to wait until she was 16. And then we began going out. And at 18, we got married. And this is about 30 something years ago. You didn't know this part of the story. Wow. I did not know. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> 35 years it's going to be, yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, miracles happen in the synagogue. And when you pray... And you look up, you get your, your prayers answered. Mm-hmm. And we began growing in, in Torah and mitzvot, uh, little by little. The synagogue we used to go was a Sephardic synagogue, even mm-hmm. though I'm um, Eshkenaz. But when we moved to Miami, we went to the Sephardic synagogues. And we, at that moment, we, we didn't connect in the synagogue we were going. So we ended up looking for another synagogue. And without knowing, the synagogue that was near our home was a Chabad shul. Mm-hmm. And we began going there. And we had no idea what was going on there because they were studying something called Tanya mm-hmm. and ah, I would have used you very uh, at that moment because I used to call it Chinese I had no idea what was going on and we began learning uh, Hasidus and uh, just to make the story shorter a few years later we began learning about Bitahon and Trost and Imuna and mm-hmm. we found the jewel the sacred jewel of uh, understanding what it is to be a, a Jew so I always say that you study Gemara you learn how to think like a Jew. You study Shulhan Aruch, Halacha, Jewish law, 
and you learn how to behave like a Jew, you learn Hasidus, and you learn how to feel like a Jew. Mm. And you have to wait until you learn Imun and Bitahon to understand how to be a Jew. So that was our, our connection to Bitahon and uh, to the Gate of Trust. Is uh, It taught us how to be a Jew. I have a follow-up question to that. Was there something, because I found in my work with people, and maybe Margie, you've seen this too, that very often we can go through Jewish observance and still this concept of emuna, more 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 particularly bitachon, is kind of overlooked and we can go through the motions but not really grasp this bitachon aspect and not have it manifest in our behavior. And oftentimes something happens in people's lives that kind of challenges them in some way and it triggers their thirst or the desire to really nourish that tool that is already in their toolkit, but they just haven't manifested it in some way. Was there anything in your life that you feel maybe drew you to developing that tool of bitachon? I'm going to tell you that it is exactly the same thing that got us to be observant, mm. which was divine assistance. Mm-hmm. I'll go back one second to a short story. When we got married, the Sephardic rabbi in Colombia had left and they brought an, a new rabbi in the interim, uh, which ended up being a Chabad rabbi. We had no idea what Chabad rabbi was or not. Abraham Ben Shimon, a beautiful rabbi. When we got married, he asked us if we were going to be in New York. And we told him, yes, we're going to be in New York. Would you like to go and see the Rebbe? So I said, yeah, great. Let's go and see the Rebbe. I had no idea what a Rebbe was. But I told Margie, we were in, in Manhattan. I said, we'll go. We'll meet the Rebbe, we'll take him out to lunch, we'll give him a donation, and, and we'll come back. So we went to see the Rebbe, and okay, there were 2,000 men, 3,000 women, so I said, I think lunch is going to be late. So <laughs> so at that moment, we believed that the Rebbe connected us, and he opened a channel that was closed, and that made us come back into, into being religious. So the second part to go to to your question, I like to ask successful people, older people, what advice they would have somebody given them when they were 20 years old. Mm -hmm. And normally, 100%, 99% of the time, I get, don't grow too fast, don't do this. Everything is more business. And I ask them, are you successful? And everybody tells me, yes, why? Because of the beautiful family they have, etc. But I asked this question to the uncle of my son-in-law, to Yossi Stern, which is an amazing person. And he told me, I would like somebody to have taught me Bitahon. Mm. But I didn't understand what he told me. And still, I, 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 I dive in, I study, I go to synagogue, I put uh, uh, two tefillim, three talits, uh, grow the beer, <laughs> everything that, that you can imagine. And still... You know, you you get anxious because life is not easy. And about three years ago, my son-in-law recommended a a book on on Bitahom from the Shevet Alevi Rabbi Slovakshi. And I began reading it and it complemented the gate of trust that I was missing on, on understanding. And I understand at that point, something that was amazing was that the gates of, of the blessings you have the key of the gates. So once you have Bitahon, everything comes easy. And right. once you don't have Bitahon, you hmm. are closing the gates of your own blessings. Wow. So once I, I was able to understand this, everything else that I have studied and learned began to make sense. And then I understood why Yossi Stern had told me that he would like to understand somebody to teach him Bitahon. So th- that was the connection. And that's why I believe that once you learn and you understand and you internalize Bitahon into your life, life becomes a a different experience. Yes, for a woman that doesn't work like me, for example, that I have no, no, I I don't earn money, (laughs) you know, it helps in the sense of of fixing your relationship with money. Mm -hmm. Because women, usually women, when they're married, then the husband is the one that's the breadwinner of the home, and he's the one that brings the money, it starts to put your, your, your relationship with money in a different perspective and and really when you you're not so fixated on on the money I, I i don't mean that a person has to be uh not responsible for their for their accounts but you you're not so fixated on it and counting every second you spend and and and, and you know like distributing mm-hmm. everything you buy 
yeah, you're not so into it, but you're doing what you need to do. Like you have a Shabbat meal. Okay, so I'm going to do Shabbat. It reorients the, the, the relationship of money. Yeah. And it takes a lot of stress out of the woman and her spending. Mm-hmm. Obviously with responsibility and, and in a responsible way, but your priorities are different also of what is important to spend your money and what really matters. It puts your values in order. And what is most important is most important. And that's what we have to take care of right now. The rest can't wait, you know, and the material world becomes a material world. It doesn't become right. your world like you own it. It, it, it doesn't own you. Yeah. And it's right. a whole different experience. So I found in my personal case that it really took away a lot of stress in me and my relationship became a healthy relationship. Yeah. You said that you're not working. You're not earning money. My wife tells me that you're teaching classes constantly, that you've got a full time two or three jobs jobs of teaching. <laughs> and honestly, t- to let you know, and this is my own feeling about Pitachon, that the money doesn't come from your husband going to work. It comes from Hashem. And definitely all the schools of your classes is what's bringing the success and the Parnassa to your husband and your family. So there's no doubt that in the team of a husband and wife, this concept of Pitachon and having trust in Hashem, I think it was Rivka and, and Yitzhak were praying for, for children. Yeah. She was upset. How come we don't have uh, children? And he said, why are you turning to me? Turn to Hashem. The same thing. A wife can turn to her husband and say, you know, how are you doing? How's business? And the husband can look to Hashem and say, listen, don't turn to me, turn to Hashem. It's funny you said that because I was going to say to Margie how I often feel like we think what our husbands need is that we trust in them. I'm not not suggesting that we don't trust in our husbands and we don't support them and encourage them and all that. But I'm starting to really get the impression that what husbands really need is a wife who trusts in God. Like when a husband sees that she is has something that's beyond both of them that she's relying on it really gives a husband that sense of calm and confidence to go about their business and their work and knowing that she's with me in this you know like we're in it together because because she's connected above you know I think it's very healthy for the relationship when we shift. It's a subtle shift, but it's really nurturing that exclusive trust in God above. And Roberto, maybe you can add to that, but it's my feeling that when a woman nurtures that in the relationship, it really has a very positive impact on him, on, on, on the husband. I can add something extremely important that I would give a recommendation to every husband when they begin to to learn Bitahon and uh, Anemona. Don't Tell your wife what you're learning until you are sure that you have internalized it. Why? Because <laughs> I began to tell Margie how the Parnassah comes from Hashem and how the money that we spend for Shabbat is not counting, etc., etc. And at some point, we went through a difficult time and I went to Margie. And I told Margie, I said, you know, you have to be careful with the money you're spending, the this, until that. And she said, no. I'm not doing that. You said that the money comes from Hashem. He looked up to, to heaven and she said, Hashem, you created the problem. You fix it. Mm-hmm. Wow. So I had to lower my head, go out of the room and said, okay, okay. <laughs> next time I have to be more intelligent before I talk. <laughs> but the, the truth is that it worked. Before you go spreading uh, your knowledge, internalize your knowledge mm-hmm. and, and know how precious this information is. There is nothing more precious in Jewish religion than Bitahon. Nothing. The rest is condiment to life. Amazing. Once you're able to internalize Bitahon, everything else is an, an, an addition to your religion. Beautiful. Tell me, Roberto, can you give me some examples from business on a daily basis even, when you are thinking one way and immediately uh, the, the thoughts about Bitahon come into your mind and then you shift the way you're thinking and then you go back to that peaceful, relaxed state. Or are you always in the zone? No, 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 no. Nobody's in the zone. Nobody's in the zone. It is, it's impossible. We, we are humans, and, and humans is a, a mixture of, a, of, of conflicts. Mm-hmm. We, we have a body, we have a divine soul, we have an animal soul, and, and we have, there's something which is uh, beautiful, that there are several things that we, you have to take into consideration. One is that whenever you're davening, whenever you're doing the Shema or the Amida, you have control. So when you daven in the morning, you daven in in the afternoon, you daven at night, at those moments you have control. The rest of the time, not always you don't don't have control because the animal soul, it has control at many times 
and is, is fighting to see who, who is in charge and is correct and is proper because that is what we come to this world. We come to this world to struggle and to win, but we right. don't come to win without a struggle. Many years ago, during the year, I would go to Daven and I would be in the zone, perfect. Me too. And then without, without realizing, I would lose that tranquility, that peace, because something happened. I lost yeah. an order, the check mm -hmm. didn't come, whatever, all the things that we go in life uh, through, or I had a different difficult customer or difficult employee or, or with a partner or whatever. And then Everything. I would lose it. And I would yeah. be so upset. And mm -hmm. I used to, to have, I still have them here, because I read in a book once the, that the Hasidic masters, they used to keep a, a notebook and they would be uh, taking notes all day of wow. the things that they were proud and they were not proud. So I have about, I don't know, seven or eight years of my, of my calendars. And I was upset at the end of the day that I would lose it. So then yeah. I asked Rabbi Greenberg, and he said one day, he says, go into Tanya. And uh, he told me exactly the chapter. I'm not sure right now. I think it was chapter 41. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that the energy that sustains the world changes 12 times during the day. Changes at night also, but during the day. Yes. And, and it's not exactly every hour of 60 minutes. It's according to proportional hours. And what it means is that all the mitzvahs and has shalom, the transgressions, they get dropped and they go up and then you have a new chance. Mm -hmm. So when I learned that every hour you need to be connected, I did one more crazy thing. I put a, a reminder on my phone that it would ring every hour. Wow. Every hour, I would have a message, a positive message, telling me how to reconnect. Wow. So I did that for a while until I was able to, to be in the zone a little bit more. <laughs> When you ask me about different types of emuna, I can give you hundreds and hundreds and hundreds in our life. And <laughs> um, when we went to see our first apartment with Margie, we were in love of the apartment. It was the most gorgeous thing. We tried to negotiate and it was impossible And then the guy wouldn't even answer our calls. And at the end, after six months, we said, okay, it's not going to happen. We were looking for another apartment. At the end, we find a, an apartment that was not as good, but it was good. And we had um, an appointment to do closing at 5 p.m. Wow. At 11 o'clock in the morning, the owner of the other apartment calls us. What happened? You never called again. I said, yes, we called every day. <laughs> I said, okay, we're interested in doing a deal. I said, okay, you want a deal? We need to close in the next three hours or there's no deal. And we closed. And, and we lived in that apartment for many, many, many years. So after that, I, I always tell Margie and I tell my, my children and my partners, anything that we're doing a deal, if it's going to be ours, it's ours. If it's not going to be ours, it's not ours. And you see it once you, you live in peace and you let Hashem run the world the way he knows how it has to be done, things work out. Things work out. Amazing. Matt, we have an all-star lineup of exclusive podcast interviews coming up. You know, we don't just take anyone on the Gator Trust podcast. You got to be exclusive, right? Hey, by the way, is that exclusive promo code still available on Kahat.com? You bet it is. But what is it? I think it was a 25% off promo code TRUST, T-R-U-S-T, when you buy the book Gate of Trust. Oh, that's right, Matt. At Kahoot.com. Felix. Oh, I mean Kahoot.com. K-E-H-O-T.com. And hurry up and leave a rating to enter the raffle to win a free Gate of Trust book. You got it. And please leave a five-star rating if you love our podcast. And if you don't, don't leave a rating. <laughs> Back to Roberto and Margie Scherer. Yeah, I'm sure you and, and Margie agree. I know you've done the Patakhan Boost and Margie was one of the speakers. Why do you think at this time in history, it seems to be making a revolution in the world, this Sharp Betachon. This book's been around for a thousand years, and the Rebbe's been reminding us for decades to learn this text. Why is it today? Why do you think it is so crucial at this moment in history that Betachon is so central and everybody's waking up to the excitement about Betachon? I don't know, Margie, how you feel, but I think you're right, Matt. I think, I think the Rebbe knew 
the Rebbe was preparing us for, he knew the needs of the generation. And I really do feel that this generation, this is the last challenge, let's just say, a real challenge. And it could be everything, life is moving at such a great speed and the idol worship of materiality has become so steep. Life was so much simpler generations ago, right? We didn't have the abundance, which is for good. We have, it's good that we have all the abundance, but that also has lent itself to idolizing all the materiality that we have and creating so much stress in people thinking that that's all they have to go after and losing sight of where it's coming from. So we're in a state where people are very, very anxious, very nervous, and the floor has been shaken beneath us with pandemic and with economic crisis and all the things. And people are needing to trust something beyond what they can see, feel and touch, which is what they've been trusting for the last few decades. So it's definitely what is needed now. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that the world is evolving. I would say evolving. We are coming into a new age. You can see it in every aspect, the technological, biological, <laughs> emotional, a lot of things going on that are shaking our ground. The world as we know it today is not the world where we grew up. It's not so sheltered and not so comfortable. I would say it's comfortable in the way that people have more comfort right. in their lives. Like there's, it's more comfortable lives. Like you have washing machines and, and dryer machines and all these things that make your life more comfortable. But in a certain way, a lot of the value systems and, um, and what used to be is shifting, like everything is shifting. And I think Hashem is taking us somewhere, like there's a plan, there's a purpose in all this. And if we don't connect to the bitachon aspect of our lives, if we don't connect to, to Hashem moving the world and taking it to a certain place where he needs it to go, then people can start going crazy, like having horrible anxiety attacks and uh as we see today, like people need so much therapies and, and things because they have nowhere to grab themselves to. Mm -hmm. Like they feel like they're floating in this ocean and they have no, nothing to hold on to and they're drowning. So we need it. We need the bitajon in our lives today, not only in strengthening us, but to help us understand that there's a plan and there's mm -hmm. a God and there's somewhere we have to get to. And we are partners with Hashem in this process. People need to understand their place in the world and what's their purpose and what's their, 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 their tikkun and what they can correct and perfect in their space, in their little corner of the world. And if you don't have bitajon, then you cannot, you cannot accomplish it. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can delude yourself to think you're in control. And that's where the problem starts. When you think you're in control of the success, Failure, yeah, the success, okay, so you take credit for the success, but everybody goes through challenges, everybody experiences failures, then that same thing flips over, and then how do you handle being the one in control of the success? That's where everything crumbles, but if you've all throughout realized that really God is in control, and you're just partnering with him, like Margie said, and going through the motions and the natural order that he wants you to go through, but really he has your back, he has you covered, right, then you can go through the ups and downs in a calmer way. In the times that we're living right now, we still struggle, still working and being able to, to pay the mortgages and to pay the tuitions and to pay the, the car the leases and etc. It's still a struggle. But if you compare the way we live, as Margie was saying, the way we live right now, compared to how people live 50 years ago, 100 years ago, 500 years ago, we're in the best of times. Mm -hmm. And since we're in the best of times, the basic necessities in general, not everybody, so, some people, they have a very difficult uh, lives, but in general, people have a much easier life in what we used to call surviving. People were busy surviving. They were busy trying to put a roof on top of their heads, working very hard to put food on the table. It has become easier with, with the years. We live a much comfortable life. People are busy. What size of, of television they can have, how they're going to upgrade the car, where they're going to go for vacations, to which uh, Passover, Pesach program they're going to go, which vacations they're going to take. 
So since the world has been evolving in, in this direction, people have more time to think. Mm. And when people have more time to think, if they don't begin to think about purpose and why they're here and what they need to accomplish, they end up putting very stupid thoughts into their heads. Wow. And they begin spending time in things that you see now, ideologies that you see uh, people busy with. I'm not going to go into them, but it's crazy that people are talking about these things. And you say, how do they have time to be busy with this? Mm-hmm. Understanding Bitajon, understanding Emun, understanding how God runs the world. It gives us an, an opportunity to concentrate on purpose and making our lives uh, worth living. Beautiful. Roberto Margi, I always tell my wife that two of you are who we want to be when we grow up one day. That uh, you're <laughs> I think you're there already. <laughs> all models uh, to us. But we also share very similar stories in that we started learning Hasidus a little bit later in life. And it has given us such an amazing understanding and purpose and mission. And, you know, without Hasidus, I don't think there you know, even is a way to, to, to live. But on the other hand, this gate of trust completely opened our eyes to something that we hadn't been learning in Hasidus for 20 years. On the other hand, if you look back at all the Hasidic stories and everything in Tanya, it's as if it was like given that you knew the gate of trust because it's so obvious that the things that they're saying in Derek Mesesecha, the things they're saying in, I don't know, Kuntra Samaya, et cetera, it's all in there. And yet there was this book called The Gate of Trust, which was so logical. And once you read it from A to Z, from beginning to end, or taking the wonderful courses that are online, it amplifies your understanding and appreciation of a Hasidus. Do you have a similar outlook, or is there another way to look at the piece of, of Gate of Trust and how it complements our uh, understanding of Hasidus? I, I love how you say it. And it's interesting, but when you're talking, I'm thinking about my life. I I have a crazy seder, my, my order of how I do, because I get up in the morning always, at, depending on the time of the year, at five o'clock in the morning, and I go to Davin Nets in a Sephardic minion. Beautiful. And then in the afternoon, I go and I Davin in a Chabad minion. And for Shabbat, I am in a Litvak minion. <laughs> so what am I? I'm a confused Jew. That's everybody <laughs> else. What are you talking about? You're a wandering Jew. <laughs> <laughs> the wandering Jew. I come from synagogue to synagogue. So what, what I like about the Sephardic uh, way of living or, or the, the line, the direction, is the passion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Passion is amazing. The singing is gorgeous. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're, we're davening in the morning and everybody's looking at the watch. We're ready. When is going to be the best moment to, to daven Amida? And we're beginning that. And it's amazing. Yeah. I, I love going to, to Habad because he's so happy. Everybody's happy. We're, we're in, a, in a constant Fabrengen. It, mm-hmm. Life is a Fabrengen, and they're all day busy trying to help more people and showing people the happiness that we have. They want everybody else to be as happy as they are. And then I, I love also being with the, let's call it the yeshiva world, mm-hmm. the Ashkenaz, the yeshiva world, because the commitment, the seriousness, to, to learning Torah, and as you said it, the, the beauty of combining Sephardic with uh, Hasidim, with the uh, yeshiva world, now with Bitahon, is putting, wrapping everything together and doing everything in peace. You know, when you see a Jew, you say, Shalom Alechem, Alechem Shalom. You say, you, everything is, is it, it, uh, it goes around Shalom. Omit to you didn't meet, we already disagreed. <laughs> <laughs> Just <joking. laughs> I agree. So everything for us is, is shalom. Is the most important thing is to be in peace. Sami Roar, may he rest in peace. He was, or he still is, one of my biggest role models in, in my life. He used to give a, a blessing to, to everybody. Gesunte menuche. Mm. So you should have perfect health and peace of mind. Mm. So that, that's what Bitahong gives you. It, yeah. it, you, it, it lets you live in peace and, and go through through the difficulties or, or the beautiful or the challenges in life in peace, sometimes with less peace, sometimes with more peace, but in peace. Last question about the Hasidic aspect in the Vitajon. I would say that when you learn Hasidut, you learn about purpose. 
and understanding. It's a lot of understanding of how the soul and it descends and it gets into the body. It's like a geography of the neshama, how people are created differently because of the way they're they're wired when they come. So that understanding that Hasidut, Hasidut gives you of the world, of, of people, of, of human nature, of a godly spark that you have inside that you can always come and turn on, you know? I think that that very much goes hand in hand with Bitajon because for me, Bitajon really is purpose and seeing Hashem in everything. Mm-hmm. Is when you when you you when you find the purpose in every little thing in your life, like even if someone's screaming at you in the supermarket, <laughs> and you and you stop and you say, okay, this is from Hashem. Like you have that awareness, and it's a training process. It doesn't happen out of nowhere. You have to train yourself and say, okay, Hashem is talking to me. He's giving me a spank. What does he want me to learn? What does he want me to do? Is it a, it's an opportunity for me to behave like a Jew? to bring a Kiddush Hashem in this moment, you know? And so when you have these two aspects of the understanding, the awareness of the moment, and knowing that Hashem is there at that moment, exactly creating the whole balagan in your life, I think everything comes together. And then you, you can be the best you can be at the moment that you're in. With, like the Alter Rebbe says, according to your capacity. Right. Beautiful. Roberto and Margie, Rabbi and Rebitson, tell me a little bit about living a little higher. Live a little higher. <laughs> like you have to live a little bit above yourself. You know, don't be so much inside of you. Like get out right. of yourself and embrace the world, embrace life, embrace yourself. You have a beautiful spark within you that Hashem emanated within yourself. And you're here to reveal that. You're here to bring that light to the world. Me personally, that's my job. That's my holy job is to help people connect to that. And hopefully when they live their lives, they live in a way in which they're revealing God in the world and they're living with their purpose and with Bitajon yeah. and Emuna. And uh, they're, they're part of the solution and not part of the problem yes. of the world. That they live happily, happy, you know, that they have, they're empowered. They know they have something very important to give. Mm-hmm. I have a follow-up question. Okay, yeah. So, so Roberta shared with us how the rabbi introduced him to the Beis HaLevi, Maimor Ambitachon, and that's when he started. When did you jump into the bandwagon of learning about Bitachon? Was it at the same time, Margie? Well, the truth is, Roberto was the one that bought the Gate of Trust, the mm-hmm. original Gate of Trust, that we didn't have this jewel over there. And uh, I'm always looking for something interesting to teach in the... In the podcast of Live a Little mm-hmm. Higher, I had just finished a whole course on joy, the Hasidic approach to joy by Rabbi Majeski. And I was like, okay, now what? Now what? And he came with his books, these two volumes. And at the moment, I knew the Rebbe was very much into it. Rubashkin was very much into it is when he came out right. of jail. And the first thing he did was take his, his uh, Shar Habitahon with him. He lived through it. And I said, okay, it's time to start learning this, but I don't want to go only to the Shar Habitahon. I want to do the whole book. Mm -hmm. And it's like what I told you, Yael, I jump in the pool and then I see what I do. Yeah. And there was nothing, nothing, nothing that I could, that I could grab myself into explanations, nothing. I just took it in from what I understood, with what I knew from Tanya, from everything I've learned, and I just brought it into, I'm still teaching in the, we're in the self of, of accounting uh, right now. Uh, I really, my, 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 my dream is to do the whole two volumes because they're, they really go hand in hand, one with the other. You really need all of them. Mm-hmm. And then Yossi Pels gave us this jewel through Hayenu, and I, the last, classes of Shar Habitahon, I was able to incorporate the teachings of the Rebbe. Today, I teach it one-on-one to some people, and it really is, it's a lifesaver. It's like people are really in very deep places. Thank God for this, this safer and, and this knowledge that is, it's opening up to the world at the perfect time. It's like the, yeah. the teachings of, of the Bashemtov. they also came 
so many years after, you know, when he was teaching, that it wasn't like all over the world. It, it took time. But yeah, I think we are in a certain level in which we're already up to this. Yeah. So Roberto, what I, I hear from you, and I think it's coming from you is, is very powerful, that as a successful businessman, and you're speaking to any young businessman, that the one piece of good advice you would give him is to learn the gate of trust. And what I hear from your wife is that Betachon literally saves lives. In many cases, there are people who are full of worries, who are having difficult times, and they're too much depending on themselves or worried about this or, or that. And by getting the right perspective, that it actually saves their lives. So I think these are two, two sides to the coin, not to mention the third, which is a husband and wife, a marriage, mm. living with the Tachon, it actually gives you a whole new outlook and a whole new peace and hopefully Shalom bias. We always say, what's the definition of Shalom bias? If you want Shalom, let her buy it. No, but really it's to learn Shalom Tachon. It's to learn the gate of trust. And we're really, really thankful to you too for being such great supporters of Hayenu and the gate of trust, this beautiful addition. And we want to give you blessings to go from strength to strength. Oh, you nice. should have a lot of nachas from your children. Of course, if you have to ask for brachas first for nachas, right? Yeah. So nachas, health, and of course, Hashem will provide you all the parnasa that you need and beyond. Amen. 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 Thank you. I want to comment on something you just said, because you said a successful businessman. And I don't like to categorize that I have been a successful businessman. Mm. Because Baruch Hashem, yes, we have been successful in business. Mm. But I don't believe that I have been successful in business because of my great mind and my strategies and my hard work. We know the stories of people that were very successful in business because they had 95% good luck, good muscle, and 5% intelligence, and they were ready to change it for 100% muscle. What I can tell you is that I have been successful in living life in growing a, a family, a strong family in Torah and Mitzvot with the strong values. Baruch Hashem, in most of the Sedaka or the projects that we have been involved, we have been successful. And that is that is my, my claim to fame or our claim to fame. We just came from a community in Harbor Islands that with Margie and with a group of friends, we began many, many years ago. And uh, we, we just still went there. They're making a new Sefer Torah. And the whole community is a big family. And that's where we see our Nahas. That's where we see the success and, and how we've been. So we believe that to say that you are a successful businessman is not a reality because we don't make Parnasa. Hashem makes the, the Parnasa. But what you do with that Parnasa, what you do with those resources... That's what makes you successful. Roberto, from the perspective of the gate of trust, you just described a successful businessman, someone who knows that the success is not because of his or her efforts, but rather because it's from Hashem. That is the success, that is the mastery of Betachon, and that is what I was complimenting more than anything else. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was such a pleasure. Continued success, really amazing. We'd love to see you guys person very soon. In the meantime, we'll live with Pitahon. Thank you very and much. And we'll live a little higher. Yes. yes. <laughs> live a little higher dot com. This was great. Thank you. Thank you, Ciao. guys. Thank you so much. Uh, Matt, what an amazing couple. So many great ideas to put into place. Felix, you know, Yael and I are still learning the gate of trust every morning. How about you? Well, you know, Sandy and I started learning Gate of Trust every Shabbos morning. And during Passover break, my daughter started learning as well. Wow. So both Sandy and your daughter are learning Gate of Trust with you. That's fantastic. Well, well, I started learning Gate of Trust with my son, and we finished the whole book over Passover break. Oh, yeah? Well, my son just finished a triathlon. Felix, we sound like those three Yiddish mamas bragging about our kids. I hope they don't end up in therapy. Well, if they're learning the Gate of Trust, I think they'll be just fine. Thank you for listening to the Gate of Trust podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, please subscribe, leave a rating, and share the podcast with the people you love. To access today's show notes, ask Matt and Felix a question, or suggest the Gate of Trust story to be featured on the show, visit gateoftrust.org forward slash podcast. Tell me you think you got it under control, you run a roll, living it up. 
living your dreams. But when it all goes bust at the seams, then you scream and cry to the one on high. He's been 